if you're exercising regularly and you're not dropping body fat or you're just working really, really hard and you expect to get a lot more results for the amount of effort you're putting through, I want to walk you through how much heart rate zone training needs to be something on your radar, something you're at least aware of that can make a significant difference and in some cases can be the, the linchpin in improving how much body fat you can drop through less effort. Now, the reason I wanted to go through this training is I've just been in a couple of different locations over New Zealand, Australia, presenting to different groups around certain ways of optimizing health. And we talk through gut health, we talk through sleep, over recovering, and we talk through exercise. And of all the topics we went through, this heart rate zone training was something that was really, really interesting and they wanted to go deeper. And for most people that are high functioning humans, running businesses, running departments, managing teams, or just running around after kids and a whole lot of stuff on their plate. This is something that really can make quite a difference when you start to understand how we're sometimes our own worst enemy through when something works well, we simply do more of it. And doing more of something that worked well before might move you into a whole different energy zone. And I want to walk you through what that might be. So if you're in your mid 40s and 50s, your body's not responding like it used to, you probably know that we need to be more focused, more specific around how we approach body fat and overall body composition in general, right? When we're in our mid 20s, we just had to eat a couple less pizzas, go for a run, and we could usually get rid of that extra body fat. So whether this is something completely new and you've never had to focus about it before, or you've just noticed it's got a lot harder, I think this is gonna be a really valuable training for you as well to give you some understanding of something you can maybe change or just start to rethink why you're doing your training and what small changes you can make that makes it a lot easier to drop body fat. And in order to take you through that, I've got to walk you through these basic heart rate zones first, because it's going to give us a lot more awareness around what's actually happening, as well as knowing that these heart rate zones do decline over as we age, right? So when you're 15 or 20, you know, we could really push to 200 beats per minute. Whereas if you're in your mid 40s or even 60s, you're going to be in a position where we're really getting to this high heart rate is anything really beyond about a 150, right? So I think that's nice to give you some uh, some awareness of how hard you should be pushing, you know, if there's concerns around putting too much stress on your heart versus really being a way to keep that heart strong and really looking at more of that aerobic capacity. So what I'm showing you if you're listening to this on podcast is that we're looking at the different zones of training. So we move from a zone one up to zone five, right? Now, the two ranges I want to really highlight is that your zone two is a space I'm gonna talk through quite a lot. And if you'll say 45, that's gonna be roughly about 100 to about 115 uh, beats per minute that we're working at. Now, if you're moving into your zone three and zone four, which is a lot more aerobic, you're gonna be sitting around more that 120 to 140 for zone three, and then more zone sort of 140 to 155-ish or 150 even for zone four, and then anything above that, sort of 155 up to about 170, you're gonna be in a spot where you're really blowing the cobwebs out, really gasping for air, and in most cases, probably anaerobic for very short amounts of time. Now, the reason this is really important is this starts to highlight the different types of stress or aerobic capacity on the body, and therefore what energy systems they're going to be using in that space. So day to day, we're going to be in zone one, we're just going to be moving around. If we go for a bit of a brisk walk up a hill, or uh, depending on fitness levels, and this can make a huge difference, but just the average human that has some level of basic fitness, you're going to be in zone two going for a brisk walk wherever. As soon as you start to move into a light jog or even a run or a bike ride, you're going to be more having to get through a bit more oxygen, your heart rate's gonna be a little bit higher and you're gonna be moving more into this zone three, zone four, right? Now, we start to see this a lot where someone initially is doing a walk in the morning to drop body fat and this can be a really effective way to just get up those steps and general activity in the day, certainly if you're generally sedentary or, or office bound during the day. You see that work for a bit and you wanna do more of it. So you start going for a run. And what we've seen is that, or, or now we know why, but uh, certainly we see this regularly, is they get the result when they're going for a walk and then when they start going for a run, they start going backwards and they see that they're not actually dropping body fat after a few months. And they're saying, well, I'm putting a lot more effort in now. Why is this no longer working? All right, so I wanna walk you through a couple of examples here to really give you an understanding as to why that might be the case. So if we look at the zone two and we look at the sort of low intensity type exercise that we could bring in, we're getting to a space that we're very much using fat as fuel, right? We're at a low enough intensity that our body can tap into uh, either dietary fat that we've eaten or body fat to really make sure that we fuel that movement. 
as soon as we start to move into more of these aerobic activities, so we're going for a run or a bike ride, or maybe it's a circuit class, which is super, super common, right? You're going into a pump class or a spin class or something like that, where it's a, ironically, some of them call them hit classes, but you're not going to be doing true hit unless it's very short, sharp, intense workouts, and they very much don't last beyond 25 minutes in most cases. So if you're doing a 45 minute an hour class, or even most 30 minute classes, they're going to be more of a zone three, zone four which means that you're very much in a more aerobic capacity. You're going to be focused on getting fit, but it's a very inefficient fat loss vehicle long term. And I want to tell you why. Because when you get into those heart rates, your body is no longer, it needs quicker energy, which means that it can't rely on fat stores as its main fuel source. Now, if you're well fed and you've had a whole lot of carbohydrates and your body and muscles especially have got enough glycogen to work through in that workout, then you can fuel the workouts with that carbohydrates, right? And now if your goal is performance, then simply eating enough to fuel that performance is obviously a really big goal. Most of you would have heard of, you know, carb loading the night before a big event or whatever. The goal is to really fuel those muscles to make sure you've got enough energy available in that tissue to really push. However, if you're trying to drop body fat, and most people are under eating in this space and then going to do a lot of these uh, classes, that means we burn through a lot of this glycogen really quickly. We don't have that carbohydrates present, and now we only have muscle and fats available. And because fats are now going to take hours to break down, we're in too high a heart rate to access that, we now turn to muscle. And this is really a space that we've shared inside our world a lot of times where most people are going into a training under fueled. They're training really hard. They're breaking down all this muscle tissue and they're not actually eating adequately and fueling that body enough to then rebuild that tissue and fuel the next workout. So what we end up doing is just working really hard, breaking down muscle tissue, hopefully rebuilding that tissue back, if not just breaking down tissue and getting smaller. So we may initially see the scales go down, right? So we reinforce that this is a good thing. But long term, we just get under muscled and over fat or we don't drop the body fat. We can't tap into that body fat nearly as easily because we're not at a low enough intensity that we can use fat as fuel on a more regular basis or throughout that workout. We're moving more into that zone three, zone four. Now, if we're more of an endurance athlete or more of a performance inclined athlete, this is where we see people getting up to even Ironman distance and they've still got weight to lose. Or it used to work really nicely and as they get older, they've noticed that they're starting to increase the amount of body fat that they're holding while still doing all of this distance. Now, it's a really interesting space and for a lot of people really frustrating because they're putting so much effort in, but this at least starts to explain what's really going on. So I've talked about this at length in more written versions of this and I'll drop the article below this as well. But ultimately what I want to get across here is at a lower intensity, we're at a space where we're really able to break down fat as fuel, right? So low enough intensity that we can simply burn through fat. As soon as we move into that medium intensity being more zone three, zone four, or simply slightly higher heart rate, just a little bit beyond being able to hold a conversation while doing that activity, we're going to be starting to initially break down carbohydrate, but if we're underfueled, we're not eating enough to fuel that workout, then we're very much going to be breaking down muscle, which is bad long term, right? We're going to be lowering that metabolic rate. We're not allowing ourselves to utilize nutrients nearly as well because we have less of that muscle available. And then, of course, we have that zone five, which we haven't talked about yet. But the first thing I want to highlight here is if your goal is purely fat loss, being able to focus on simply the low intensity exercise and really just setting a base. And this is where it comes back down to the very simple application of 8,000 or 10,000 steps to really just make sure that from an activity throughout the day, I am moving enough. But being able to add a heart rate to that gives you a lot more specificity around what zone of training should I be training? And I'm, am I actually doing the work? I think a lot of frustration and confusion that comes around exercise, is this the best use of my time? And I think for me personally, this has given me a lot of confidence in being able to go for that walk or a low intensity bike ride or even a stepper that allows me to stay at a certain heart rate, really churn through that body fat as a really effective way of not really tiring my body out too much, but really allowing me to keep my body fat in check really, really easily. Whereas I like mountain biking and I enjoy being fit as well, but what that allows me to do is really focus on fueling that workout and making sure that I'm having enough carbohydrates to get the performance out of that ride, but certainly not relying on that for an overall fat loss activity, right? It's an aerobic activity, keeps me fit and healthy overall from a heart health standpoint, but from a body composition standpoint, it's not required at all, right? It's just that I enjoy doing it. So the really the first part there is that awareness of from a low level activity, a overall cardio aspect, 
getting that overall low intensity stuff is going to be more effective for fat loss in general moving forward. The next part here is that high intensity. And of course, we're going to need to use fuel very effectively and very quickly at that level. So again, we're not gonna be tapping into body fat within that workout. But the thing that I wanna really highlight to you, and I've shared this diagram a couple times before, is the ability to look at, well, how much calories or energy we burn within a workout is tiny, right? It's 5% roughly of how much our total caloric expenditure will be for the day, right? Total timing and quality of foods will be around 7%, so we have more than that. Active lifestyle, so what we just talked about of defining more of that zone one, zone two movement throughout the day. And then we have that 75%. And the 75% really takes into a lot of factors. But what I wanna look at here is the fact that in the workout, we're going to be burning through carbohydrates that are present. Now, if we're really underfueled, we're probably not even going to be able to access high intensity, or you may break down a little bit of muscle. But again, it's for such a short amount of time that I don't think that's too much of a concern. What we're looking at here is we're creating that stimulus and response in the muscle that the next 24, 48 hours afterwards, we're going to have a much higher overall metabolic rate that allows us to burn more fuel. That's what allows me to have that bounce back effect of, you know, I've been traveling for the last three or four weeks and I've been able to keep that body fat in check quite easily, even with my meals not being perfect, because I'm in a spot where as long as I hit certain protein targets, I'm getting in some basic workouts. I know that I'm driving that nutrients into my muscle and my body's able to burn that fairly effectively. And being able to focus on that, knowing the type of training and the level of specificity around the type of training I'm doing, I'm focusing on maximizing that, what we call afterburn effect, where I'm really utilizing nutrients as best I can. And because I'm accessing that level of stimulus to the muscle, I've got as best I can improved insulin sensitivity. Therefore, I'm able to utilize that carbohydrates and really shuttle that into the muscle. And because I try and maintain a little bit more muscle, I've got a bit more of that bounce back effect. What I mean by that is I can have a pizza and I don't feel like I store body fat, right? I utilize it. Now, if I have it every day, I'm going to be like every other human and I will start storing body fat. But it allows me that confidence of knowing as long as I'm getting in, you know, four high quality weight ses sessions a week, really accessing that level of muscle tissue breakdown that that my body's burning away at a higher rate, that overall metabolic rate is higher, then I mean that I'm burning a lot more. I am not worried about the amount of calories I burn within my 30 minute workout. I'm more focused on stimulating and stoking that fire, if you will, to really keep that metabolic rate higher, okay? So where we look into high intensity, we're either doing that through a form of weight training, right? Really taking that muscle to full failure, which doesn't feel like an overall, you know, high intensity to the entire body because it's more acute to a certain muscle, right? If I go to full failure on the bicep, I don't feel systemically or overall fatigued. It's just that muscle that's fatigued. Another version of that would be something like your high intensity interval training, which very much would be more of a systemic stressor. And as an example, the other day, I brought this up for someone, if I can uh, find it, where my goal actually, here's an example, uh, which I did the other day, it shows you less focus on the number of 122 and more a case of seeing how much there's a peak and trough of those heart rates. So this was on a, I was doing sprints on a treadmill, but you could do this on a rowing machine, you could do this on a sled push, you could do it on a spin bike, all of these options where I'm pushing my body up into that zone four and sorry, zone five. So for me, that was really getting into the 180s, one, in some cases, even 190s uh, for heart rate, really blowing out the cobwebs for a good 20 to 30 seconds, max 24 seconds probably. And then I was bringing that heart rate down, giving myself a good amount of rest, 90 seconds up to 120 seconds, and then going again. And I tend to do about six to eight rounds of that, maybe once or twice a week. And that alongside my four sessions of weight sessions, weight training a week, gives me a beautiful foundation of really burning a lot more fuel. I tend to burn about you know 2,800 to 3,000 calories a day, uh, simply through making sure I stimulate that muscle tissue with really effective weight sessions four times a week, as well as a hit session on top with a big focus around my daily activity being, you know, my step count being a little bit higher and at least getting an hour or two in that zone two per week. So not only am I keeping my aerobic capacity and cardio health happy, I'm also in a position where I'm really able to tap into body fat rather than simply breaking down muscle tissue because as we get older, muscle tissue is like gold. It's absolutely something that we want to protect. And if you're simply doing more and more cardio, breaking down more and more muscle, you're gonna find it harder and harder to drop body fat and keep it away, even if you're working out really hard. And hopefully today, 
talking you through this understanding of heart rates might give you a little bit more understanding around when should I move into high heart rates to focus on fitness or when should I focus on dropping body fat. Now, this is very body composition focused as a discussion. If you are an endurance athlete, we have very much work with many of these and looking at that space of when we tap into our cardio space, when we tap into body fat to not just keep body fat low, but to really optimize towards performance is its own category in itself, but we have found certainly if you're beyond 40 to 45, not simply playing the volume game all of the time, but rather using zone two to really tap into that low intensity fitness and aerobic capacity, and then using 20% of your effort in more of the high intensity, really working on your speed and power work is a nice way to get fit for an event without blowing out your joints or uh, injuring certain ligaments and tissue. So lots more we could dive into their team, but if there's one thing you take away from today is what energy system am I using right now? And is this in line with my goal? If my goal is fat loss, my goal should not be to just do more and more running and more and more cycling. It's not just blindly doing more effort. It's more focus on staying in the zone that allows me to access the energy source I'm trying to burn, all right? So hopefully that gives you a bit of food for thought gives you something to really think about in your new training phases. And if you want to learn a bit more about this, I'm going to add both the article below and our six week workout reset for you to have a look through. If you want a little bit more structure, a little bit more focus around your training to really kickstart that body composition goal, or maybe just get clear on how to keep your body strong and active well into your 60s, 70s and 80s. I uh, hope you like this guys, and we'll see you back here next week. Bye.